Welcome to Bedtime Fairy Fails. I'm Kim. This episode was made possible in part by the live play D&D podcast, All D20. We'll tell you a little more about them after the show. This story comes from Irina with credit to her amazing DM, Mitchell. This is a heartwarming story about one rogue's journey to save her brother. It's also a lesson in the dangers of showing off. This is... Sandpoint Show-Offs. Once upon a time, a long time ago, a young tabaxi girl named Chise was adopted by a simple family in Magnamar. Her adoptive half-elf brother Darian quickly became the most important person in her life. As they grew up, Darian became one of the most promising life clerics in the entire country. While Chise joined the Scarzani family of thieves and learned how to be a sneaky rogue in order to help support her brother's learning and bring home food and money for the family. Super sweet story so far. Don't worry, though. We'll get to the blunders eventually. One day, Chise and Darian were making their way back to their homes in Magmar after a long journey when they were suddenly attacked near a small town named Sandpoint. The two heroes were no match for the attackers, and when Chise woke up, her brother was gone. It was then that she vowed to find Darian no matter what. I'm coming for you, Darian! While in Sandpoint, Chise joined a group of adventurers who promised to help her in her search. She spent a month with these heroes, winning battle after battle from various enemies, keeping the town safe. The group of heroes are eventually dubbed... The Heroes of Sandpoint! They were an amazing and capable group, so it's no surprise that when Chise finally got a lead on her brother, they were all ready to go with her and help get him back. Chise learns that her brother is being held in a sanatorium just south of Sandpoint. And for those who don't know, a sanatorium is the local asylum. When Chise arrives, she is finally reunited with her brother, Darian. Oh, Darian, I knew I would find you. Don't worry, I'm here to save you. We're going to get you out of here. I never doubted you for a second, Chise. I knew you would come for me, but we can't leave. I'll just put you in danger. What do you mean? What danger? I'm being followed by something. Something so evil and powerful, no one could possibly stop it. What is it? Whatever it is, we can save you. It's the Sandpoint Devil. Wait, the urban legend? It's not a legend, Chise. It's really after me. You have to save yourself. This asylum thing is starting to make a little bit of sense to me. Chise, in an attempt to reassure her brother, launches into all the impressive details of her party's adventures. She tells them about the multitudes of goblins they had defeated, how they had fought a greater demon, although she wisely omitted the limited success of that one, and how they saved the town time and time again from imminent attack. So, you see... We are more than capable of keeping you safe. The Sandpoint Devil will be a piece of cake. Don't even sweat it. We're the best of the best, and we will not be defeated. Just leave it to me, little brother. Feeling confident and impressed with his sister's party, Darian agrees to leave the asylum with them. Once outside, however, the party sees three ghasts and an ugly, bubbling mess of an undead chasing after a peasant who was screaming for help. Oh my God, please help me! They're so disgusting and they're probably gonna kill me! Chise is determined to protect her brother. She is going to show him he has nothing to be afraid of. It's time to demonstrate just how fearsome and strong the heroes of Sandpoint are. In other words, this is a perfect opportunity to show off a little. Now, it's important to note that it's raining pretty heavily at this point. 
making visibility a little iffy and the ground even iffier. Chise takes off across the field, yelling over her shoulder. Watch me, brother! Your big sister will protect you! She prepares a deadly sneak attack for the first impressive blow against the monsters as she speeds across the field, already planning her super cool one-liner for when she hits the creature. Except, instead of a super smooth dart across a very wet field, Chise makes it almost to the monsters, then slips on the wet grass like a complete klutz. She falls face first into a puddle right in front of all four of the enemies, completely prone and unable to defend herself. Never had her pride been so hurt. The rest of the party rushes in to help her. Determined to redeem herself, Chise fights with all her might against the monsters. Unfortunately, she doesn't manage to land a single blow the entire fight and, in fact, manages to fall and hurt herself two more times before the battle is finally over. She looks sheepishly at her less-than-impressed brother and says, I, uh, usually do way better than that. It's just the Romazamas and the grass was wet and it's kind of hot, but, uh, Mercury was in retrograde. uh... The end. This story was sent in by Connor. This is a tale that seems to belong more in a cartoon than in D&D. We'll hear about how one party saved a wizard who just happened to currently be a sheep. This is... Bad idea, great execution. Once upon a time, a group of heroes had just settled in for the evening at a Silvery Moon Tavern. It was a beautiful fall night, and the party was ready to rest up and recover from some recent adventures. Our heroes consisted of Smokey, the hardened and serious dwarf ranger, Mango, the gnome cleric who just wanted to share her love with everyone, and Marnie, the elvish bard who was consistently level-headed and cool as a cucumber. So there they were, sitting around in the tavern, when suddenly, a sheep burst through the door. The heroes immediately jump up to see what's going on. They quickly realized this is no ordinary sheep. Tied around its neck was a scroll of speak with animals. They quickly used the scroll so they could communicate with the sheep and find out what was going on. Mango said, Are you okay? What's happening? The sheep replies, As I'm sure you guessed, I'm not actually a sheep. I'm a wizard. I live here in town and I polymorph myself into a sheep so that I can hide from my former uh, apprentice. Why do you need to hide from your apprentice? Asks Marnie. Ah, well, it's a long and complicated story. Just know that he is not a good person and I really need to not be found. Can you help me? Of course we'll help you, exclaims Mango. Of course we will. Mumbles an annoyed Smokey. The heroes decide they have no choice but to hide the sheep until morning. And where was the best place to hide a sheep? In their room, obviously. Hey! Get that sheep out of here! No sheep allowed! Says the barkeep as he points to the no sheep sign above the bar. The heroes escort the wizard sheep outside and begin to devise a plan. They look around for a bit, trying to find something that could help them. Finally, Marnie finds an old coat laying abandoned on a bench. Will this help? She asks. That's perfect! Exclaims Mango. And with that, the group hatches a genius plan. Marnie would whip up a tune to distract the crowd, while Smokey and Mango would help the now coat-wearing sheep walk on two legs through the tavern and up to their room. So with an old coat a lively tune, and a little bit of magic, the group sets out to execute their plan. While everyone's eyes are on Marnie, Smokey and Mango get on either side of the sheep and help him balance on two legs as they walk into the tavern. 
obviously the sheep is pretty unsteady on his two legs, so it's a bit of a struggle keeping him upright. Which somehow just makes him look like a drunk friend they're trying to help up to bed. And thanks to a minor illusion spell, no one seems to notice that he has a sheep's head and legs. Or the occasional involuntary bleat he lets out. <laughs> After the heroes successfully sneak the sheep up the stairs, Marnie finishes her song and heads over to the barkeep and hands him a few gold pieces. That's for uh, keeping quiet about my friends and I being here. She says, Of course! Friend had a little too much to drink and needs to hide from the wife. Eh? <laughs> and with that, she joins her party upstairs and tucks in for the night. But that's not the end of the story. You see, they still had to sneak the sheep back out the next morning. Having more time to plan ahead this time, Mango decides rather than take the sheep back down the stairs, the more discreet option would be to lower him out the window. So with that, she begins tying bed sheets together into a rope. She then hops up on the windowsill and uses all of her strength to begin slowly lowering the sheep down to the ground. However, they didn't bother to try to hide this in any way. So as a couple of merchants were passing by outside, they both became distracted by a tiny gnome lowering a sheep out a tavern window using bed sheets. Which I mean, can't really blame them. It's not something you see every day. Unfortunately, with both merchants watching the sheep instead of the road, the two were involved in a head-on collision. It was a disaster. Carts were exploding, people were leaping away from flames in slow motion like an action movie. Mango and Marnie both gracefully twirl down the bed sheets to join the sheep, while Smokey decides to do the rational thing and take the stairs instead. Once outside, they team back up and set off to turn the sheep back into the wizard he really was deep down inside. The end. Thanks for listening. If you like D&D podcasts, which clearly you do, be sure to check out one of our favorites, All D20. You can find them on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you listen. To submit a fail, email me at bedtimefairyfails at gmail.com or message me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram as Bedtime Fairy Fails and Twitter as BT Fairy Fails. <laughs>